to 15 courts live during this year's Wimbledon tournament. <laughs> I said, anyone can streak, ale talk. So the owner next to me said, okay, big mouth, you do it tomorrow. As I've turned around the whole stadium, 65,000 people were all on the feet screaming and cheering. I was like, ah! All streakers want to streak Wimbledon. It's probably the finest tournament to streak. Jumped on and did it again. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, how are you, mate? I'm top of the morning to you, Christian. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're in sunny Spain. I'm, I'm, I'm envious. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like a heat wave over here, man. It's, it's so hot. I mean, I love the heat, but I mean, it's sometimes it's, it's just too hot. Do you know what I mean? Mark, I'm conscious here. I want to just, we'll dive. I want to dive straight in with a streak in, and then we'll back chat and talk the other stuff but yeah man. What, what how does that come around what what point in your life do you think do you know what i'm going to take all my clothes off <laughs> run across that rugby pitch or football pitch or well i'll tell you what man the, obviously the first time alcohol had a lot to do with it big time and I, I used to work, live in hong kong worked in a bar and the rugby sevens was on saturday sunday events two days so i'm pissed the bar on the Saturday night with the owner and all these guys came in and said talking about Gale Street so because I'm pissed I went so he said anyone can streak ale talk so the owner next to me said okay big mouth you do it tomorrow I went yeah go on but it was ale talk and Chris there was no intentions whatsoever so eventually anyway so in the morning I told everyone in the in the pub I was going to do it a guy bangs on my door I didn't get in till 4am Pissed as a fart. I'm a comatose on the couch and this guy's banging on the apartment door. I said, what's going on, man? What's going on? I'm going to sevens. I said, I'm not going anywhere. That was just ale talk. That was just talking shit. He said, no, we're going to sevens. Open this door, I'm going to kick it in. So I opened the door and I'm still dressed from the night before on the couch. Just grabbed hold of me, threw me in, in the elevator, straight to a waiting taxi, straight to Hong Kong Stadium. And I'm like, what the so what's going on here, man? I was totally out, out of it. Goes in the stadium, straight to the bar. Let's have a beer. First one made me feel worse. Second one, a little bit better. Third one, okay, I'm on a, just a normal little level now. I'm a bit even. Right, let's have a look. I hadn't even looked into the stadium. So when I put my head in, one of the first things I saw was a chick fella with a chicken swinging it round his head. I'm thinking, I'm going in thinking it's just like a football game back home in the UK. Everyone's just sitting down and, you know, watching the game. It was a carnival, Chris. It was party atmosphere. I got, wow, I felt the energy. Went, right, let's get this done. Let's do it now. So I walked down the main stand, sat at the bottom, took my clothes off. The All Blacks were playing in South Africa, the Springboks at the time. So I just ran on backwards, bollock naked, waved to everyone that was in the main stand. Okay, I've done it. As I turned round, there was the ball. But my mind just said, get that. So as I ran, I picked up the ball, ran a whole length of the field, scored a try between the posts. Chris, I'd never, that moment changed my life forever. As I've turned around the whole stadium, 65,000 people were all on the feet screaming and cheering. I was like, ah! okay, now, man, what's ah! going on here? I've just scored a try against the All Blacks. So I was oh. like, yeah, come on. So next thing, I'm running back to my seat. And as I'm running, the old, a couple of the old blacks give me a little, little clap. Crowd are going nuts. So I've climbed over the, the barrier again. I've gone, shit, I'm bollock naked here, man. So I've put my hand over my little fella. And he is a little fella. And I'm going, wow. And Gail coming over, giving me kisses. And loads of guys pouring beer over my head. I thought, wow, this is great. So I went, oh, what the hell, do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm making the day I was born. So what the hell? And as I'm stood there, this uh, policeman who stood British rules, an English policeman was walking along and he's giving me the motion. Go on, I'm giving you a chance to go here. And I'm shaking my head going, no, man, I'm staying here. He's going, no, go. No, man, so he's got hold of me anyway, eventually. And as he's taking me off, he said, I'm going to have to throw you out. The whole stadium all at once was going, leave him home, 
leave him alone. So he's got me to the, to the gate and I'm going to throw you out. If you come in again, I'm going to arrest you. I said, no, don't be silly. As I'm going out, some fella slipped me a pass. So come straight out one turn style, come in the other. Jumped on and did it again. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, brilliant. Brilliant. Oh, man. It, was, it was crazy. What year was this? 1993. And what time did you leave Honkers? Um, well, I was there for about a year. Um, then I came home, went back again a couple of times for a few months at a time. Uh, I had things going on back home. So, yeah, back on, off and on, two years, really, all in all, I was, I was in Hong Kong. But that first year changed my life. You know, it let me realise... I can be who I want to be and found a calling, if you like, in life, you know, to cheer people up in the craziest, silliest way. Mm. Great one. 93. Do you remember the big crush or was that, that was just after, that was just before um, you were there, I think? Probably. In but I don't think anyone... It was in Lang Kwai Fong. There was 21 people crushed to death one night. Oh, I thought you said meant to crash. Oh, no. Well, I've known must have been before me then, man. Yeah. yeah. That was my first trip to Hong Kong, and I was in um, Mad Dogs in Lan Kwai Fong. Oh, wow. And right? outside, outside in the street, or one street over, there was all these dead people and ambulances, and I was just wandering was this down. New Year's Eve? Yeah, New Year's Eve, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I've been told about it, yeah. I wasn't there then, no, not at all, yeah. But I actually moved there in 95, so might have been we might have been there at the same time. Possibly, um, yeah. I went back 97 to do the handover. Uh, I came back 90, end of 96. So, what, term, what bar was it you worked in? Uh, no, the bars. Uh, well, the first one was in uh, Wan Chai, Joe Bananas. <laughs> Check. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. in like my song, Yeltsin. Yeltsin's, yeah. Yeltsin, yeah. That was where the, that's where the owner told me go on the day you to do it tomorrow. That's where I was working at the time at the, at the sevens. My God, yeah. I was yeah, the doorman. Well, I, I, I was the doorman on Joe Bananas until they sacked me. <laughs> 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 I think they uh, they liked sacking people in in that place. So. Yeah, one of my friends was the doorman on Joe Bananas. Would yeah. I know him? Jimmy Griffin from McGull in Liverpool, small, stocky boy, stocky guy. Yeah, I think I, the, the name seems to have been floating around in our, our sort of circle. My yeah, gosh. Yeah, man. And here's the, the thing, Mark, right? Okay. I had a run-in with the Hong Kong police in a stadium. I was actually waiting to go for a, a doorman interview um it was for um rick's cafe right rick's right okay yeah. and i got there early so i went to wait in do you remember the football stadium in wan chai the little the it's like the football yeah the small one yeah 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 so i went and sat in the stands and i was just watching the lads play football i don't know who who it was the two coppers patrolled in Hong Kong Chinese and they just looked at me and went and it it's just that thing if you've been in 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 Hong Kong and you know that difference of mentality that kind of oh here's a guy on his own he must be doing something wrong that that kind of and then well, what, what was your persona like you obviously well, just sitting there with the I, I was just waiting to go for a job interview, so uh, I, you know, yeah, so you just, you know it, 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 but the point is they, they took me in the toilets, um, basically they wanted to strip search me and I, but because I had, let's just say I, I had stuff to hide on me, so and <laughs> I, I, I knew they weren't going to find it. <laughs> so i i just i just went along with it and i'm like you know because i i i 12 years in a chinese prison is not what you and that's oh, what that, you. that's what that's what expats were getting at the time for as little as one ecstasy pill right and so oh, i man. and I, I had a little bit more than that and and um 
<laughs> and so I just went along with it, Ma. I'm like, yeah, sure, because I, I knew that then 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 they're gonna go, okay, go now, right? But but to to take it back to your situation, it's quite I know it was under uh, British rule at the time, but it's still quite a risky place to be to be to be doing something that is so un un Chinese. Totally, totally naked. But the, the first twice I did the rugby sevens on the Sunday. I mean, Yeltsin's that night treated like a bloody hero and what have you. And an English reporter came in and I knew him from back home. He said, Mark, he said, fucking hell, that was fantastic. He said, there's a game on Tuesday, two days later, South China playing instant dict, instant district. I think there, Mong Kok Stadium or whatever it was. He said, do that. I'm, I'm on the boards, Chris. Do you know what I mean? I went, yeah, go on, man. So me and Jimmy, the doorman from Joe Bananas, we went, blagged the fellow on the door that we knew one of the players was supposed to have left tickets for us, and he let us in. And Chris had gone in, expected to be the same as the Sevens, the atmosphere. It was 25,000 Chinese, all sit there, sub sub There was not a, a single ounce of atmosphere in the whole stadium. And I said to Jimmy, I don't like this, man. He said, well, don't do it. I said, no, man. I said, I'm here now. I said, I'm going to do it. So let's see. So as the teams are coming off at first half, I've run down the stairs. There's a Chinese guy at the bottom trying to stop me. I just dodged him. Got in the middle of the penalty spots, ripped me, laid me back, ripped all my clothes off, stood up, bollock naked, and started to run. It was like tumbleweed going across the pitch, mate. You couldn't, there wasn't a single sound. And as I'm running, I'm thinking, shit. This isn't going down too well, man. So I've got the length of the pitch, threw myself on the goal, did the facing goal, stood up, surrounded by photographers, so I'm doing silly poses. And it was all Chinese police, no English police. And they just stood there thinking, what the fuck's going on? So I went, saw this, so I took off to do another length of the pitch. And that's when they call up. All of them came at me from every part. This was when the Chinese started to rise because I'm taking a piss out of there. The people who are subduing them. And one of them tried to rugby tackle me. I've dodged to one side. He's gone flying in, in the grass. The Chinese are starting to become animated now, the crowd. So I've got the other end of the pitch, threw myself in the goal. I've got like seven or eight Chinese police around me and one shouted in my face, you crazy, you crazy, you have big penis. I said, no, man. I said, just have a look at the size of that. Ah, no. So he made a cordon around me. And I put my hand on the, the shoulder of the guy in front. And they marched off with me in the middle. And the crowd, the look on the crowd, man, from before I went on to that moment, it was like a cartoon, the whole situation. But one of them, as he's marching off, he broke me toe accidentally and took me off. And I'm in the, in the, uh, the charging room in the stadium now. So I'm sitting there, and any time I get nicked or get grabbed afterwards, always passive, never antagonised. OK, because I've done my thing by then, do you know what I mean? So, OK, no problem, no problem. And he comes screaming in my face in Chinese, then walk away and laugh at each other. I went, shit, what's going on here, man? So they put me in a van, took me to the police station, and they went to put me in a cell, and one of the policemen went, no, 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 no cell, in here. He just sat me in a room, he said, why you do this? Why? I said, because I just want to make the great Chinese people laugh. He looked at me and went, oh, oh, very good, we enjoy, very good. So next thing, we're, we're chatting away like mates. And next thing he said, right, where you work? So long story short, I told him I was working in Yeltsin's, he said, okay, after this, me and my friend, we come find you. I said, why? He said, no, we have drink. So they, they were buzzing. Do you know what I mean? I, got, I eventually had to go to court, got arrested. Uh, sorry, got charged. Uh, and it was an English judge. He said, I'm sick of these streets. We had two on Sunday. Now I've got you today. It was me both times on the Sunday, man. <laughs> yeah, but he bowed me over and said, if you come here again in front of me in the next 12 months, you're going to prison. And I did the sevens again the following year with two days left on me, we bound over. And when I, ju when I jumped on, I scored a try against the All Blacks again, then converted it. I ran back to my seat and the black watch was security. And one of them grabbed hold of me and said, yeah. he said, you want to get nicked, mate? I said, yeah. mate, I've got two days left on this bind over. He said, I don't give a shit. You're getting nicked. He's called the police over the Chinese police. I said, can I put my clothes on? He went, yes. So as he turned the back, I just... Bombed it, mate, legged it straight through the crowd, out the stadium, and gone. So I was lucky I got away with it. Had you grabbed your clothes before you legged it? 
I was putting them on. So I had my shorts on. So I had my trainees on. I just grabbed my T-shirt and just bummed it. See, the way my mind works is I'll be worried after I've done my street and I come back like my clothes weren't there. And That's then happened I'll... many times. <laughs> what happens then? Well, you just have to get on with it, don't you? That's part of the adventure. Yeah, but I mean, how do you get home or, or, do you, or are you always arrested? Yeah, I, I went to do his... Um, I'll, I'll try and do this short because each story's got a good good bit to it, you know what I mean? But I'm doing a film thing with uh, these Canadians who are filming some guy called Jimmy Jump in Spain. He copies me, but he jumps on his clothes on and he ruins games. He goes on during the match or do, do whatever the tournament is. He's copying me, but a different game, but he's ruining it. So they said, we're filming him on Sunday at the Galacticos game in the Bernabeu, Real Madrid versus Barcelona. So they left me on the Friday. I said, well, don't tell them about the timing and everything. So we won't. And so this, so I've jumped on a plane. All they had on was my rip-off clothes, a shirt, my passport, my ATM card, and my bag, my, my little man bag. Turns up, gets a ticket for the game. Nobody knows I'm there. Watching the game. He jumps on just before kickoff. So now I know they've told him, he lied to me. So half time comes, just before kickoff. I'm doing my thing, I've got past security, I've jumped on, ripped my clothes off on the pitch, and I'm legging it. And I don't enter the pitch, so I got jumped. Police station. So I'm sitting there naked. I said, Senor, my clothes, no clothes. I said, Senor, blanket, it's cold, no blanket. But I'm sitting on a wooden bench by the main doors where all the police come into the police station. Three, four hours, I'm sat there. Senor, blanket, no blanket. So about two o'clock in the morning, he went, you go. I hadn't spoke to any police or nothing. They just said, you go. I'm bollock naked. I thought, it's a wind up, man. So I walked out the police station, started walking up the streets, expecting one of them to call me back. Nothing. So I walked back in the police station, said, Senor, my clothes. Your clothes, they go. What's happened? When I've jumped on the pitch, ripped my clothes off. Security's picked them up, threw them in the crowd. My phone. My passport, my money, my ATM card, everything I had gone. So now I'm in the middle of Madrid, two o'clock in the morning, bollock naked. What do you do? Fuck it, go for a run, man. It's cold. <laughs> so I'm just running through the streets of Madrid. I have a clue where I'm going or anything. And then eventually this guy stopped me saying, No, I said, No, why? In Spain, they show every bit of it. On the TV game, the football matches would have jumped on every step until you can't see me no more. In the UK, obviously, nothing. He said, oh, that was you. I see the football. That was you. I said, yes. He went, wow, fantastic. So he's, he's stopped his taxi. He said, where you go? I said, I've got no idea, mate. I'm just running. So I thought, hang on. The guy gave me the ticket. It was in the Holiday Inn by the Bernabeu. I stopped the taxi, gave him his last 20 euro, told the taxi driver what was going on, and he was laughing his head off. Drove me to the Holiday Inn, goes in. The, the guy gave me the ticket. was there. Everyone in the bar saw what was on the telly. I walked in bollock naked, and then the owner, co- the manager comes out, out. So I had to wait outside while the guy would, got a pair of shorts, a t-shirt, had a bevy, got me head down in his hotel. I went to the, the, the airport the next day, reported my passport stolen at the game, which it was. He gave me a piece of paper to get on the plane with. I was in work the next day. And uh, oh, I had to sit around and say, what do you do the weekend? I went, oh, not much, just the same old, same old. <laughs> Why is it when, when anything like this happens at a sporting event, you get some people just like, they're just laughing and, and completely benign. And, but then you get these have a go heroes that think they think they've got the right to like phys- physically assault you. But they're the ones with the power, st- power thing going on in the head, isn't it? The security you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've been beaten a few times, but twice the most severe beatings I've had with Old Trafford, Man United's ground. Their security is notorious for treating even their own fans violently. So the first time I jumped on, man, you game, and I was fitter then. And I, one guy chased me, left him for dust. Alex Ferguson was laughing his tits off. Peter Schmeichel was in goal. He was buzzing his head off. So I'm leaving this fella for dust. I stood in the middle of the pitch. Went, get your mates on. Worst thing I said, mate. There's five or six of them come on then, cornered me. I've got tattoos. I've got Thailand. I've got Hong Kong. He said, hey, where's he from? He said, look, he's foreign. He's got tattoos. I thought, that's good. If they know I'm a scouser, they'll have a reason to have a go at me. So they took me off down these maze of tunnels in Old Trafford. 
beating the shit out of me, mate. Banging my head to get, running my head into a wall, kidney punches, uppercuts, and all the rest of it, and threw me on the floor. I'm, st- I'm waiting for the kicks now. He said, put this on, give me a high vis. Took me to the police little charge rooms, got inside Old Trafford. And I've walked in, as soon as I crossed that threshold, that sanctuary. So now they're all outside, and now I'm two feet away from them, talking to the cop, he said, name and address. To Mark Roberts, Liverpool, he went, he said, fucking scouser. I just turned around, looked at him and went, yeah. <laughs> so the policeman walked me out. A few months later, it was the Rugby World Cup final at Old Trafford. I thought, I've got to do it. So I've gone on my own again, jumped on, left them for dust, rugby ta- trying to rugby tackle me, let, dodging them and everything. Then now, now they know who I am. Got hold of me, think you're funny, do you, scouts? Give me a beating. In front of the police, the police just turned the back, says they beat me and taken me to this, this room. As they took me in the room, they threw me in across a table. So I've stood up and I thought, wow, it was a room just full of security. And the head of security walked in, came over, went, bang, give me a dig. Didn't go down. I've seen a bit of a few stars and that. So, but I can't retaliate because I'm in a room full of security. As he's gone to hit me again, police walked in, took me off, took me to the charge room, and this guy walking behind me. I said, listen, it's nothing to do with Man United and Scouser. I said, I did uh, Anfield two weeks ago against Chelsea and scored a goal. So I'm doing it everywhere. He said, you come back here again. It's personal. So the cop had said to me, I told the policeman I got did, did it um, Anfield. He went, what happened at Anfield? He said, just let me go. I was on bail. I, was, I got charged. He said, they let you go. We're going to let you go. Just threw me out. But the fella said, me, I've gone up the gate. I warned you, don't come back here again. I thought, well, sod it, mate, I've done you twice. Don't need to do it again. <laughs> Did you ever end up serving any jail time? Um, not really. It's mostly a few hours in the cells or overnight. Mm. Uh, when I did the Super Bowl, I was in the, the, the cage uh, a day and a night. Um, I suppose that was a bit one of the, the more worrying times because it was just 30 lunatics. And I'm, I'm walked in as a bloody referee. The Super Bowl. Yeah. Tell Texas. us about in Texas. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> well, I've done everything up till now, up to this point. How was that? How how was that? Because that's a very different audience again, isn't it? Big time. Quite quite conservative, if we can say. Well, yeah. And especially in Texas, where it's a really Bible belt state, isn't it, you know? But I mean, that was, I tried the year before in San Diego, wasn't prepared, got a promise to take it when it turned up. He wanted 10 times the price. So that went by the by. And so in the meantime, I thought, wow, yeah, the Super Bowl's in Texas. So what I did, it was like military planning, mate. I had someone to go to the stadium in, in Houston, take your pictures of security during a normal game so I can judge it. And the stadium was half empty. Security was intense. Oh, wow. I thought, okay, well, I can see what that's going to be. So Super Bowl is going to be 10 times as bad. I thought, how am I going to get to my seat? To the middle of the game, middle of the field. I thought, fuck it, I'll go on as a ref. So we wrote to the NFL. So I'm trying to be an American referee in the UK, but I can't get uniforms anywhere. So they sent me two uniforms, the NFL did. I took one to a seamstress, a lady who does all dress repairs and everything. Who knows exactly what I do? I'm going to take the whole thing apart, sew the top to the bottom, and put it all back together again with Velcro. Right? So she's done it all. Next day, I go and pick it up. So I've gone home and I've got it on camera. I've put the, the uniform on. I've gone, let's see how this is going to go, man. Chris, immediately the whole lot came off in a second. Or, Oh, come on, let's have it. <laughs> but then it's okay, I've got that sorted. We had tickets sorted up in the front row, 50-yard line, where they do the kickoff. I thought, okay, so now the intensity is coming to me because this is this is this is on. And now the worry, what's gonna happen to me when I jump on the field? Because these guys are so big. I thought, okay, one of them might want to try and clothesline me, you know, knock me down, I might it might slap my neck. Okay, one of them might want to try and give me a dig. Fair enough, I can take a dig. But my worst fear was all of them jumping on me at the same time, did a big pile on. 
and I suffocated. I wouldn't. I don't think I got through that. And I started worrying to bits. And this is no way will I make it. I'm not being um, uh, what's the word? Small about it. It was not long after 9 11. So I thought there's going to be snipers on the roof just in case there's anything going on. It's gospel truth, Chris. I thought, well, I'm going to go on naked. So they know I'm going to be unarmed. But to try and take me out, they might try and shoot me in the leg. I thought, okay. All right. I'll take that to do the Super Bowl, the, the, the biggest event in the world. So I'm not belittling it, though, you know, don't get me wrong. I thought, yeah, this is how far I was prepared to go. But it was the, the big jump on on top of me that I was really scared about. So I worried about it constantly because there was a whole year of planning. And the more I worried about it, the more I was pulling away. And in the end, I had to say, don't worry about it anymore. You go or you don't. I thought, no, I'm going. So that morning when I'm leaving home, give me kids big, massive hugs, man, because I didn't know what the repercussions were going to be and what have you. So once I'm on the plane, that's it. No more worry. It's in the back of my head. Gone the game. I took a friend. I said to him, if it's going to be that intense when we're in and I can't get a clear line to run on, you go further down the wall, drop your phone, go to climb the wall to divert security to you so I've got a clear path to run on. He went, I want to be part of this. I want to get arrested with you. I said, no, I don't. You're getting nicked, man. So anyway, he he goes in, sitting there, front row, security, police security, it it was ringed. There was one guy right in my path, stood. I was sat there for four hours before my time to go on was. He didn't move on, didn't even go for a piss, nothing. Rigid. I said to Mick, my mate, said, listen, if he doesn't move come that time, you take your phone. He said, okay. So I'm, I'm joining in with everyone. You've got to look just like any next punter. But all the time, I'm just clocking everything. Uh, my, my heart's beating like mad. My, my stomach's churning to bits. And I'm, there was a little element of panic starting to set in a little bit, but I had to stand back and half time come. I'm at the back going, fuck. <sighs> Trying to calm down myself. In the meantime, I didn't know Janet Jackson just got a tit out. On stage with Justin Timberlake, that was the same game. But I didn't know, but I'm going, <laughs> okay. So the show's gone off. I've walked down to my seat, trying to look, well, I've looked calm, just like normal. Sat down. The guys, the teams have come on, the ball's on the 50 yard line. And the guy still there said to me, go and drop your phone now, Chris. And the whole four hours, man, I had a light shining on my head. She said to me, go and drop your phone. And this guy walked. I spoke to another security guard further down the line. The only time I needed to go, he went. He said, Mick, so now my, my own clothes are off. I'm a referee, man. Dropped the wall and all the people around the fence, around the, the field, excuse me, man, excuse me, man. They all moved out the way. Right into the middle of the field, just before the guys about to go and kick the ball. But, Whoa! I went, what's up, ref, man? I went, fuck all, man. He started dancing. He's dancing uh, on the ball, uh, I thought, wow, yeah, go on. And all the players are going, what's the fucking referee doing, man? I thought the referee's gone round the bend. So I'm looking at all the police. The crowd know what's going on. The crowd are going nuts. The police are going, what's going on? Total confusion. The referee's lost his mind and he's dancing naked around the ball. I'm on there for the whole minute. All these mad moves are going on. Next thing, they're all onto it. Every policeman's come at me to chase Apart from the, you know, the little performance, the chase is what everyone wants to see. Come on then. So I'm running. As I'm running, the crowd, the noise was just going ridiculous, mate. There's players come running in from the side, shoulder charge me to the ground. I've got maybe 15, 20 people on top of me, face pushed in the grass. I'm getting handcuffed behind me back. After all I could go was, I've just done the fucking Super Bowl, man. <laughs> <laughs> what all these people on top of me and for me, I did it, man. Do you know what I mean? It took me off. The police loved it, man. What punishment did you get for that? I pleaded not guilty. <laughs> I got the best lawyer in Texas. It was Ray Source Haynes. He was like the number one lawyer in Texas. He said, no, no, there's no one told you you couldn't go on the field. There's no signs. There was no uh, notifications, no speakers. Goes to trial. And this prosecution trying to give me six months in prison in Texas. And that's what I was shitting myself for. And all the TV cameras there, one of you. And our argument was, you know, nobody told me I couldn't go on. So I took the Fifth Amendment. I'm not taking a stand, man. You, you proved my guilt. 
and they all go out to deliberate. I said to the TV guy, one of the cameramen, what do you reckon? He went, if no one looks at you when you come back, it's guilty. So they've all come back in, not one look. You've been found guilty, Mr. Roberts. Uh, you come back tomorrow for a um, sentence. And I chose sentence by jury rather than the judge, which you can do over there. So come back in, same thing again. You come out, cameraman said, if nobody looks at you, you're going to jail, man. They come in, I thought, hang on, did one of them just give me a little sly look? What? Hand it to $1,000 fine. $1,000, man. I'd have paid a million. Oh, of course, straight away. Immediately. Yeah, yeah. A thousand dollars to do the Super Bowl. Is it? Um, is there some sort of club then? Do you? Do you? Club. <laughs> do you chat with other streakers or keep in touch? No. Well, I've done many loads of chat shows over the while, over the years. I've met, I've met quite a few, and every single one, people to streak, they do it once, just for that crazy moment in time. And every one of them has said, "You'll never forget that moment. It's one of the best moments in their life because it's literally." Ultimate freedom for a, for a minute. You know, you, you freeze a bit and the next thing you know, you, you lose your freedom completely when you get arrested and get locked up. But for that one moment, everyone, I've never met anyone who, who, who regretted what they did. Have you ever met Erica Rowe? Yes, I have. <laughs> On the Vanessa Feltz chat show. My gosh, she made a name for herself, didn't she? Can we say... Yeah. Uh, for our younger friends watching, Erica Rowe was about, about 25 years ago now, if not 30. And uh, yeah. let's just say she was big and bouncy. Mm. <laughs> Very, and still, and still was, still is. Yes. And uh, <laughs> she, she, I think she's probably been the biggest name, hasn't she, in streaking? It's certainly in yeah. the UK. Well, that's it. She, she, she went on. She, she got so many deals from that because nobody would seen anything like it. Do you know what I mean? I was just saying she was a big girl. And, you know, the whole uh, demeanour when she went on, she was laughing her head off. She had a cigarette hanging at the corner of her mouth. She was joyous. And she did well out of it. Do you know what I mean? But, um, yeah, good, you know, good on her. There was, a guy, called, Sorry, there was a guy called Chris O'Brien. He is, his photograph is very, very famous. It was before and Erica. He's, I think it was a trick of him again. It was a picture of him. He had a long hair and a beard and he looked like Jesus. He's got his arms out as a policeman with his helmet covering his mickey. It's a very famous photograph, but he always said he regrets it to this day because it affected his work, it affected his relationship. It was just, it was just a moment of madness, as he said. But I mean, it's iconic, that photograph of him now, man. Mm. Yeah. What? Well, tell me about this advert then that I saw the other the, that I saw the other day. That that was you in it, wasn't it? Yeah, the Danish one. N yeah, narrating the advert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was for um, a Danish TV channel advertising their coverage of Wimbledon this year, and they chose me to advertise their TV channel because I've done Wimbledon twice, dude. <laughs> oh, you've actually done Wimbledon. Yeah, did the men's final. Yeah, did the somersaults over the net. Yeah, man. This is where my mem memory is possibly failing me, or <laughs> I just simply didn't watch it. But I don't remember a big hullabaloo about it. Was it cut right, out? Two, with 2002. Uh, I think Leighton Hewitt and Medalmian, or someone like that, they, they weren't two very well-known, popular figures at the time. Um, but the foot, there's, there's footage out there, and it's it's not bad. It, it's a it's a it's a good performance, if I don't mind saying so myself. Because see, I don't just run on and wave. I like to do something that makes people laugh. And then once I've, once I've done my performance, and then the chase. So there's different elements to think to what I do. Do you know what I mean? And uh, yeah, that was that was a pretty good one. Did you run run on as they call call for new balls, please? Well, no, I did that in Roland Garros. The final, the new balls, yeah. But I, at Wimbledon, I had to choose the moments when to go on because there was a rain break. And as they're coming back on, it was the only time there was an opportunity for me to get past security. So I just went then, do you know what I mean? Gosh, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll try and put some of that advert in our podcast. Can't, can't use too much of it because it's obviously not our material. But you can, Well, yeah. the, the, the streaking footage, any, any streaks that you see on it, they're mine. 
Ah, okay. You can use any of them, the actual streak. And so yeah. on the other side, the, all the others are actors pretending they're just about to go on. But when you see the actual streaks, every one of them is me. Wow. So you can use any of them if you want, Mum. And have you ever been paid for this? Do you get paid for the interviews that you do? No, not really. You're paying me 12 grand, aren't you? <laughs> well, it, it was actually going to be 30, but if, if, you're, if, you're, if you're a cheap seat, mate, let's go for, call it eight, shall we? <laughs> No, I mean, I, I, when I, after I did Wimbledon, it made news in the States. And uh, I got an email from this company. Well, for, it was from a, a middleman. He said, listen, we've seen what you've done. Uh, if you run on, you pick any events in the world that you want to do. Go on with our name on your chest. We'll pay for your flights, pay for this, that, and the other. We'll pay for everything and get you good lawyers. And these are the ones who got me the front row tickets for the Super Bowl. So it wasn't for them. I mean, I, I, I don't want to appear to be selling out because I'm not. But they gave me not. They gave me an opportunity to go to places I wouldn't normally be able to go to. You know, the tickets were ridiculous. Fifteen grand for two tickets for the Super Bowl. You know, and the expenses and everything else. The best lawyer in Texas. So I'm thankful for them. You know, for um, But the story behind them is when when I failed in San Diego the year before Texas, they got in touch and said, "Listen, I've got, we've got tickets for the biggest thing in America, man." Because I knew if, if you hit the stage, you have to hit the top because you might get another chance to do anything else at all. I said, what is it? He said, we've got tickets for the Oscars. So what do you mean? He said, you've got two tickets. You can go streak the Oscars, man. I said, no. I said, that's not the biggest thing in the States. He said, it's all about the Oscars. and the Super Bowl. He said, you can't do the Super Bowl, man. I said, why not? He said, it's never been done. Can't be done. I said, is that right? You get me tickets and I'll show you it can be done. And I did it in style and they were just... Let's, let's just say they were quite happy. Their traffic went up 400% after they did the Super Bowl. So, yeah, good so job. What, what does the future hold, mate? What's, on, what's next on the, the agenda? Uh, well, I was in Hungary a few months ago this year for the, you know, during the pandemic, and I thought, I want to do something while it's intense. Um, it was the Super Cup, the winners of the Champions League final and the Europa, Europa League final. So I've gone on my own. You have to have two negative tests to get in. They can only stay 72 hours. So I've gone the game, dressed as a referee. No, another referee's uniform, Velcro. I'm in a stage, okay. Security's over there. The first five rows are covered in tarpaulin, so nobody can sit there. And there's a 10 foot, maybe 12 foot drop over the barrier. So it's okay. So my time, just before kickoff, second half, I thought, well, if I get over these seats, Okay, not a problem. He's not going to come near me by then. Just before the, the kickoff, second half, I've gone over the top pole and got my foot jammed in one of the seats. So I'm struggling to pull it out. He's seen me. So by the time I've got to the barrier, I'm climbing over, he's grabbed my arm. So next thing, I'm struggling to pull my arm off him. And by the time I've done it, I got to the floor. Security on the floor have seen what's happened and grabbed hold of me, took me off. But I'm dressed, put me in three jails. The third one was like a boot camp. It was, I thought, what the hell's going on here, man? It was intense. But I, I thought, I've done nothing wrong. All I've done is drop a wall. I wasn't naked. I was still dressed. But in this boot camp, right now, we strip search you. I thought, shit. Okay. So the, I had an interpreter. She said, he wants to know if you have any underwear on before you get undressed as a jest. But my underwear is joke. So they would, you know, okay, she told them the women had to leave the room. So just me, the bull, and his mate, top off. So I took my top off and written across my chest, I've got, lock this down. Because it was all locked down. <laughs> so and on my back, I've got peace and love. Right now, the shorts. So I've took my shorts off, thought, here we go. I had an elephant over my knob with a mask on. He went, what is that? I just went, it's an elephant? Ah, no COVID, because they had a mask across the elephant's trunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then he did all that, and then he made me do this, the, um, the frisk against the wall, but he's put me wrists that way instead of me hands against the wall, me wrists that way. So if I, you know, be funny, he just pushes me back, and my wrists are going to, you know, snap or whatever. So no offense, and he's doing a proper, not nice strip search, mate. 
locks me up in a cell, swim in a cell for a while. And after, I don't know, a day or so, you go. Thought it's over. So as I going down to get me stuff, the interpreter said, no, 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 now you go on trial. What? I've been in three jails. Been here for a while. Trial. Goes to the courtroom. Said, what, what can happen? She said, no, no, maybe jail. I thought, wow. She said, you okay, go against Hungarian law. You get against, go against our government. I've only dropped a frigging wall, man. So anyway, long story short, eventually found me 80 quid. Two years probation in Hungary. Sounds like you leave Hungary immediately. But I don't think you missed my flight home. So I got a flight to Spain, stayed, stayed here for a few days, and then, and then went home. I got a letter saying, if you'd have done what you were going to do, or what it basically said, minimum one year, one month, eight, 15 days in jail. If I'd have got my kit off, I'd have done the two years, mate. Do me one favour. Whatever you want. Please don't ever streak in Thailand. No, I've done a full moon party in Koh Phangan. Yeah, so have I, funnily enough. And in, <laughs> in the morning, right, this is what a lot of tourists don't realise. If, you, if you've got your wits about you at that point and you look around, it's so many undercover police there. 100%, yeah. And they, they're looking for gullible, naive Westerners that have taken gear with them and they can pat them down and they can, you know, either take them to cash point, make them draw all their money out. And if they can't do that, then, then, then they, they bang, up. Put, bang you up awaiting charges. And that's not the place you want to be, uh, you know, charged with that kind of offence. But the thing is, their sense of face is so strong. I reckon if you was to streak there, they would just take that as the ultimate insult against their country. And they would just, I think you'd probably end up doing a lot of time for it as well. Well, that's it. Well, as I say, I did the full moon party. As the sun's coming up, I ran the length of the beach with the, you know, the everyone gets painted in the luminous paint. Mm. All length of the beach, bollock naked with this luminous paint on. And then, thankfully, as you say, nobody got onto me. Yeah. Yes. Gosh. Yeah, there's some countries you just don't even dare make, like Muslim countries and stuff like that, because, you know, it's just, and I don't want to offend anybody, because what I do is about making people laugh. So if I, I look to think everything through before I even go anywhere, when I come up with a plan, and it has to be as pure as possible, all about fun, all about uplifting, and if it's not, I don't even go there, mate. Yeah, got you. Mark, listen, you've been absolutely wonderful. As you have, sir. Yeah, stay on the line so I can just thank you. Stay on the line. Stay on, cool, the, man. Stay on the Zoom so I can thank yeah, you cool. properly. But for the purposes of, of, of the podcast, um, keep at it. Just just please be careful. Yeah, 100%. So our I've friends at home. Sorry, say again. I've got a good lawyer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> friends at home, I hope you've enjoyed this as much as I have. If you can like and subscribe. That would be wonderful. Please do, everybody. This man is a diamond. There you go. 